On the 20th of May 2019, Formula One lost a legend of the sport. Nikki Lauda, at the age of 70, had passed away of natural causes. As we say goodbye to a motorsport legend, let's look back at his incredible life and why he'll be remembered. Lauda was born into a wealthy family who made their money from making paper. They were against the idea of him starting a racing career, but thankfully he decided to ignore them. He started out racing a humble Mini in 1968 before making the jump to open wheel cars, first with Formula V and Formula 3. In 1971, he bought his way into the March team in Formula 2 and Formula 1. He did reasonably well in F2, finishing 10th in his first year and 5th in his second year. He would also start his first F1 race in 1971. He would then move to BRM for 1973 and Ferrari in 1974. In 1974, he would finish 4th in the championship and also take his first Grand Prix victories at the Spanish and Dutch Grand Prix. However, his big break would come in 1975 when he won the Formula 1 World Championship for Ferrari. That same year, James Hunt for the Hesketh team finished 4th in the championship and for the following year, he would land a seat at McLaren and a legendary racing rivalry was born. Coming up to the German Grand Prix, Lauda was leading Hunt by 23 points and had taken 5 wins to Hunt's 2, but a famous and fiery crash would leave Lauda fighting for his life with severe burns and lung damage. In hospital, he was actually issued his last rites, and the first words after coming to were reportedly, get that priest out of here, I'm not dead yet. Against all the odds, Lauda would recover and return only two races later at the Italian Grand Prix. Burnt, bandaged, in extreme pain, and somewhat visually impaired due to not being physically able to blink, he would bring his Ferrari home to an astounding 4th place finish at the Italian Grand Prix. Lauda would then put up a strong performance for the remainder of the season, even taking a podium at Watkins Glen, but Hunt would eventually prevail by just one point in the championship standings after Lauda retired from the soaking wet Japanese Grand Prix for safety reasons, an act which James Hunt described as an act of bravery, not of cowardice. Regardless, Lauda's comeback is regarded as one of the greatest, if not the greatest, in sporting history, and has cemented him as a sporting legend. Lauda wouldn't stop there though. He would go on to win the championship in 1977, and two further Grand Prix for Brabham in 1978 before a two-year break in 1980 and 1981. Lauda then cemented his status as the comeback king by returning to win another world title in 1984 with McLaren. He retired from Formula One at the end of 1985 after a legendary 13-year career. After his driving career, Lauda would start his own airline. He also had a commercial airline pilot's license and on occasion would captain Lauda Air flights. Why simply drive fast on a racetrack when you can go even faster in the sky? He would also take on roles for both Scuderia Ferrari as a consultant and later become the manager for the Jaguar F1 team. More recently, he would become the non-executive chairman for the Mercedes Formula 1 team highlight being signing Lewis Hamilton for a three-year term. Nicky Lauda will always be remembered for being a brilliant driver and an equally incredible engineer and businessman. He never gave up in the face of incredible hardship and that is something that everyone, not just in the racing community but around the world, can admire. Three championships, 25 Grand Prix wins for three different teams, 54 podiums, 24 poles, 24 fastest laps and a legacy as the comeback king. Rest in peace. Thank you like that.